Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010 in Russia. And um, today we are going to discuss the topic of keto diet. Does it really help everyone with cancer? Are those people who are saying that keto diet and uh, fasting is needed for everyone saying actually truth? Let's figure it out. So, here you can see the pyramid of uh, keto diet. Uh, ketogenic diet is a low-carb diet and high-fat diet that has been studied for its potential benefits in uh, managing certain types of cancer. However, its role in cancer treatment is not fully established and it's not a standalone cure for cancer. Potential benefits are starving cancer cells, uh, many cancer cells rely heavily on uh, glucose and sugar for energy production. By reducing carbohydrate intake, the keto diet may lower blood glucose and insulin, potentially starving the cancer cells. Second, ketone uh, and healthy cells. The body produces ketone bodies as the alternative fuel for our cells if we don't have enough carbs, if the carb levels are very low. Our cells can use these ketones for energy and uh, some studies suggest that cancer cells cannot efficiently uh, use these ketone bodies. And third, uh, reduced inflammation. We know that cancer causes systemic inflammation and cancer uh, survival and resistance is dependent on inflammation. Uh, ketone bodies can uh, decrease edema, swelling and inflammation. Um, so they are anti-inflammatory and they can actually reduce the side effects of chemotherapy and also some studies show their potential benefits uh, in um, improving the sensitivity of tumor to chemo and radiation therapy. Also we know that uh, often glioblastoma for example cannot uh, use uh, ketone bodies uh, for its uh, survival, for its um, nutrition and also based on preclinical evidence sarcomas are also very glucose dependent. While many cancers exhibit uh, a preference for glucose due to their altered metab metabolism, uh, you know the Warburg uh, effect, a few studies suggest that certain cancer types are mm, actually able to metabolize ketone bodies under specific conditions. For example um, uh, melanoma or prostate, prostate cancer, or some brain tumors also, and even uh, some breast cancers, for example, triple negative breast cancer. They actually can often use ketone bodies, and keto diet can, um, can uh, actually enhance their rate of their development. That's why the metabolic characteristics of a tumor can vary between individuals, and uh, testing the metabolic phenotype uh, of a specific cancer type may help to guide dietary interventions. Also, don't forget about heterogeneity, that tumors can be metabolic uh, metabolically diverse uh, with different uh, regions of the same tumor in the same patient uh, behaving differently. And that's the real problem. In general, hypoxic or low oxygen tumors tend to rely heavily on glucose. And well oxygenated tumors uh, may have more metabolic flexibility and could potentially use ketones. This is the general principle. Hypoxic tumors, they are low in oxygen due to poor blood supply, rapid growth and abnormal vasculature. Hypoxia is generally associated with poor prognosis uh, due to treatment resistance and uh, metastatic potential. Oxygenated tumors, uh, uh, they have adequate um, oxygen supply and better vascularization and slower growth. Here you can see some highly hypoxic tumors, the most aggressive and fast growing. And uh, here you can see moderately hypoxic tumors. But again, uh, even they are very reliable on glucose, as you already know, for example, triple negative breast cancer can often be able also to metabolize ketone bodies, but not always. We also have some case reports of uh, effectiveness of ketogenic diet. For example, this young man 
had a glioblastoma, a very aggressive tumor in the brain. And uh, here they show that many famous and rich people died very fast from this tumor. And this man, uh, he started keto diet in 2014. And uh, after three years, he was still alive with some minor symptoms. Surgeon decided to uh, remove this tumor. They could not remove it totally, uh, but uh, they removed some part of it. So it will occupy, le occupy less space. Also, uh, we can see that this patient uh, had uh, no uh, edema around the tumor. Edema is the problem. It causes resistance and it causes pressure on the surrounding tissues. And uh, usually we give dexamethasone um, to reduce this edema. And here ketone bodies, they are anti-inflammatory and anti-edematous, uh, uh, meaning that they help with this edema. And after removal, this uh, tumor was studied and they proved that it's really glioblastoma and it had IDH1 mutation. That is showing that this tumor is very dependent on glucose. We'll talk about it later. The patient continued self-administration of this ketogenic diet and continued very slow progression of this tumor that was left by surgeons. For seven years, this patient is alive and uh, has a good quality of life. Few more um, cases with lymphoma. Uh, first, of, first one, uh, this is lymphoma with 90% um, involvement of skin. And uh, after keto diet, uh, his skin normalized. A second case, um, this is a man uh, who tried the first line of treatment, it didn't help. Uh, then he started chemotherapy plus keto diet and uh, all the symptoms and uh, all the tumor in the body was gone. And uh, two years after he's done with his treatment, uh, he's still in remission. But here it was also chemotherapy, not only keto diet. But we know that keto diet can potentially improve their sensitivity to chemotherapy. And third case, uh, it's also lymphoma. Um, the person got six courses of chemotherapy. From fourth course, he started keto diet. All the tumors decreased in size. Then he stopped uh, chemotherapy and continued to do keto diet. After two years, he has no signs of tumor and he's in remission. One more case, a man, a fourth stage of lung cancer with metastasis to brain. He get uh, he, he got uh, chemo radiation therapy to brain and to lung. And after three months, both metastasis and tumor decreased in size. He started keto diet and nothing else. After two years of keto diet, both metastasis and tumor reduced in size even more. And the brain metastasis was already calcified. Uh, he was on keto diet for nine years and uh, both uh, tumors were stable nothing was growing and then he had to stop it because of some problems with his blood tests too high fats there and uh, after two years of uh, keto diet cessation he was still uh, without any symptoms of uh, cancer progression so it's already quite interesting and there were also some clinical trials showing that women who got keto diet in addition to uh, chemotherapy before uh, surgery, they got better results, their tumors reduced much better when they also added keto diet. But also there is some, uh, there is one study on, it's on mice, but still, uh, where they showed that uh, mice with breast tumor uh, had more metastasis on keto diet uh, than uh, without keto diet. Mm, I would think maybe it's because this kind of tumor in mice was um, able to ingest these uh, ketone bodies. How do we determine in uh, every individual case would keto diet work or not? Well, we can use several advanced diagnostic and laboratory techniques. Uh, first of all, uh, tumor metabolic profiling. Uh, genetic testing. Some tumors can have genetic mutations that affect their metabolic flexibility. Uh, it may provide insights into whether the tumor can metabolize ketones. Standard gen genetic testing. It's widely available. Many cancer patients undergo tumor genomic profiling or uh, next generation sequences, NGS, uh, to identify different mutations uh, that may guide treatment. 
Uh, these are tests often include genes related to metabolism like uh, this AD, IDH1 or LDHA which are associated with glucose and ketone metabolism. This is widely available. And we know that mutated IDH1 and LDHA tumors might be more sensitive to carb restriction to keto diet as they are heavily dependent on glucose to fuel glycolysis and the production of ATP. Uh, if the tumor cannot efficiently use alternative fuels like ketones, glucose restriction may actually slow its growth. But some may be resistant to ketogenic diet as they can adapt by using glutamine or other substrates to maintain their energy production. Uh, and the next, gene expression analysis uh, uh, assess the expression levels of key enzymes involved in ketone metabol metabolism such as this uh, SCOT or BDH1. Uh, high expression of these enzymes suggested that uh, tumor might uh, metabolize ketone bodies. This is more advanced, specific tests focusing on uh, this uh, ketone metabolism may be harder to find, they may be only available in specialized uh, cancer centers or research labs. Next, second, imaging. Uh, magnetic resonance spectroscopy can identify metabolic uh, byproducts including ketones within the tumor providing clues about uh, whether it can use ketones. And uh, PET scan uh, shows um, uh, the patient gets this um, marked shining uh, glucose that will be seen on CT scan and um, tumor will um, absorb it. And the more glucose it absorbs, the more it is dependent on this glucose, the more it loves this sugar. But it doesn't mean that this tumor cannot, for example, metabolize ketone bodies. But this test is at least quite available. And of course, this is um, the most advanced, like tumor biopsy and laboratory testing. A tumor biopsy can be, um, they take tumor from patient, they can culture it in the lab, study it, a response to different energy substrates, including ketones. This culturing of the patient's tumor is uh, highly specialized and uh, often restricted to research facilities. Uh, metabolomic analysis. Uh, the metabolites uh, such as ketones uh, consumed or produced by the tumor, uh, they can investigate. This is a cutting-edge approach to measure how tumors metabolize nutrients. Uh, unfortunately, it's done uh, in research setting, uh, but starting to appear in uh, very advanced uh, clinical uh, cancer clinics. And what we usually do for nowadays, the easiest way is just to observe and monitor. Uh, for example, patient has this size of the tumor, he starts treatment, he starts keto diet. In two to three months, we check again, do CT, MRI, PET scan, and see, okay, tumor. Uh, decreased in size. Very good. Most likely ketogenic diet is helpful or not helpful. The most primitive but most available and easy way. So what are the limitations and concerns? Uh, that it's not a standalone treatment. Keto diet is not a replacement for mm, surgery or chemotherapy or radiation therapy. While promising it's not proven in uh, large clinical trials, mostly it's preclinical studies, animal studies, and of course the problem of weight loss and malnutrition that uh, may be worsened by keto diet, nutrient deficiencies, keto diet may be hard for digestive system. Anyway, you should consult your doctor whether keto diet is uh, appropriate for you or not, whether you have any contraindications, for example, and also ask oncologist if uh, your cancer center has any opportunities to check for metabolic characteristics of the tumor. That would be a very valuable information whether to start keto diet or not. I want to thank you for your attention, for your time, for sharing this video and of course for supporting this channel. Have a nice day. God bless you. Goodbye. Don't be afraid.